What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caden, this is Middle Class to Millionaire. Today we're gonna to go over my two portfolios that I have with M1 Finance. In my prior video, we went over the step process of how to open an account and some of the features that M1 Finance has. Today we're gonna to go over my two portfolios. We're not gonna go fully in depth. I'm not gonna look at every single holding. Um, you can kind of pause the video and look and kind of see what I have in them. But we're gonna go over the two objectives that I have with these and kind of the strategy that I am creating um, and creating additional income, uh, creating additional retirement accounts for the future. So these two portfolios I started a little over a year ago. Um, actually, we're coming up on the two year mark on both these portfolios, but I have thoroughly enjoyed M1 Finance and the just the load and the weight of, off my shoulder when it comes to investing with M1 Finance because it is just intuitive, it's so easy. Um, you kind of sit it and forget it. In the grand scheme of things, this is the most passive form of investing that I've ever had. Um, so it's been a load off the shoulder in the mind um, whenever you know you get busy with the day-to-day -day life and the hustle and bustle going around. But um, with all that said, let's look at the two portfolios that I have. So one, this is my brokerage account. Uh, this brokerage account is titled Passive Income. I'm looking at creating multiple forms of income, not just today, but also in the future. And so the goal with this account is to create additional flows of income through means of dividends. You can see right here, this is earned dividends of all time. A dividend is just a regular interval of payments that a company will share out to its shareholders. So by being a shareholder, um, just means that you are owning a portion of a share into the company. So everybody who is investing in, in a company is technically a shareholder. Not all companies pay dividends. Some believe that a company that pays dividend is a company that is no longer seeking growth. It's not necessarily true. Um, a company just may have a surplus of cash. It also could be in um, a negative cash balance where uh, a lot of companies will take on debts or they will sell assets to pay dividends to shareholders. But a dividend um, for, I'd say, most of the companies is just going to be a, a percentage of the profits that they're going to send back to the shareholders is more of a thank you for investing in the company. You don't really have to do anything for these dividends. So I'm not out there making the the day-to-day -day decisions of each of the companies. I'm not out there with all the board meetings, um, you know, out there actually transacting with all the guests and, and customers and clients that these companies have. I just bought shares in the company and I sit back and I receive income through forms of dividends. And so those dividends, you can do whatever you want to with them. You could turn them into cash, put them right back into your bank account and go on your merry way. Or you could turn those dividends into more shares of those companies and returning them back to the company or buying different companies um, to help you and to help you further grow your balance over time. It's just an additional way to help snowball. So think of it as interest in the savings account. That interest is continuously compounding more and more and more, uh, creating a higher balance than it was today. So with those dividends, my goal is to create a passive flow of income. So in the future, this income could be just another, it could pay my light bills, it could pay my mortgage, it could pay a fun account, or this could be our vacation account. Um, so in the future, all the in income that I receive from dividends could just be income that we could go and just travel the world or spend time with family. So whatever the income is for you, it is helping to obtain a goal or objective. So this portfolio here is my passive income seeking growth, but also seeking companies that pay a good dividend. So you can see down here, um, I have many companies that I have within my portfolio. Some have done really well. Um, some have lacked behind a little bit. Um, you can see that I have some that are not necessarily fully a dividend company. So, so such as like Nvidia, I'm up 244%. Um, but you can see right up here, another company I have here, it's more of the growth side, but AMD, as you can see, click on right here, AMD details. Um, AMD creates um, a lot of processors. Um, it's real big in the gaming community, but um, this company relies on a lot of like IT type bases, um, providing like high performance computing. You see graphics, um, like I mentioned, just more processor based. Um, it's a very growth oriented company, does not pay a dividend. So as you can see, the dividend yield is zero, but it's still in my portfolio because if I were to only see companies that pay a dividend that I'm going to miss out on a lot of the growth in the account over time. But this, this holding itself, 
It was up 1,700% in over five years. Um, the one year on here, it's only up 51%. It kind of took a little downturn during this. Um, it seemed like the tech sector has hit pretty hard uh, during this recent little downturn, but 51% um, still phenomenal. But you can see companies that I do have that actually pay good dividends, almost all these, Apple, Lowe's, Pepsi, Waste Management, Republic Service, Home Depot, and the list goes on and on. So Ford recently, um, during the pandemic, they froze their dividends. So if you look at Ford details, you can look at it over the growth. You can see where they were paying out a regular dividend over and over and over. Well, during the pandemic, when the company um, took a recent downturn, they held onto the cash during this time frame to, um, I wouldn't say just necessarily restructure the company, but to allow that cash to weather through the storm. And as you can see from the recent downturn, it has skyrocketed. I can see Ford returning that dividend in the future. If they never do, um, the profit has been great over the past year. You can see the company is up 136% over the past year. Um, so I'm not gonna bat an eye if this company does not return its dividend, but I could see this being one that will, um, that will continue in the near future with their dividend payments. But, and you can see the list goes on and on, on the growth and also the cash flow. I have some down here that I've started that are new. So you can see I only have $74 in Qualcomm processors, um, but it's up 79%. Latisse Semiconductors is also up 217%. But I would say over 80% of my portfolio pays dividends to me. And so my, my goal is to increase the position of these companies by dollar cost averaging into them um, every week I put money into this portfolio and then I also put money into my Roth IRA. This is a new Roth that I started um, a little after the passive income account. My, my goal is to continue to increase the position of each of these companies by dollar cost averaging in here. So every week I put money into this portfolio and also I put money into my Roth IRA. And the goal is to just continue to increase the amounts that I have in each of these companies. By increasing the amount that I have in these companies will actually increase the dividends that I receive from those companies. So a lot of, a lot of these companies will be paying you um, per share that you have with the company. But as I mentioned with M1 Finance, you do not have to have the full shares. So with like Realty Income, for instance, I have 5.89724 shares with this company. I just continuously put into this company over time, every week, a little bit more goes into this company. So it's increasing my position with the company. I'm not timing the market. I do not have, I don't care what the market is doing. So even during the pandemic, when it hit, I didn't stop. I continued to buy when it, it dropped. I was buying when it was high. I did not look at the time of the market because I knew that in this current state, this was not the end all be all of that company. If I believe that that company would never grow to another penny in the future, then why invest? So I believe that all these companies, no matter where they are, no matter what the news states, these companies are in a, in a lower state than where they will be 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now. And so my goal is to continue to dollar cost average into each one of these companies to increase the position, which will increase my dividends that I, re that I receive which will also increase that cash flow that I will receive in the future. So I also mentioned that I started a Roth IRA. So I have a Roth and I have my passive income brokerage account. They both are brokerage account, but this Roth IRA receives tax-free growth. So this is more growth oriented. Um, so you can see this one looks a little bit different. So you can see that I have sub pies within my big pie. So. Um, if you look over here, the passive income, you can see all the individual companies. You can see how this pie chart is. I have all my individual companies. Well, in my Roth, I have subcategories. So I've created these. I can show you a step-by-step -step process on how to create pies within. But I wanted to say, um, be able to control the percentages that I have in not just each company, but also each sector. So I didn't want to be overweighted in sectors. So I kind of wanted to see the difference in the philosophy and in, in investing between the two. So right here on my automotive, I have Tesla, Ford, General Motors, and Ferrari. So some of these holdings will be the same be between the two because you can see that I am still seeking growth, but I'm also seeking companies that pay passive income um, in my dividend portfolio. But this one here is not just companies that pay dividends. As you can see, none of these pay dividends except for Ferrari does. Um, but these are seeking growth in this company. So 
Tesla at one point I was up, oh shoot, four or 500%, but it took a recent downturn. Um, but it didn't matter. I continued to keep buying this. So my position is increasing over time because I believe that this company has a huge potential and not only huge potential, but also huge impact in the world. But let's go back out of the automotive, but you can see that I have my technology. I have Microsoft, Apple, Intuit, NVIDIA. I mean, you can see the list goes on and on. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that I did not have overweight positions within my entire portfolio. So of Microsoft, I said that I only want 15%, but I only want my, I only want my technology portion to be 15%. Of the 15% of my entire portfolio, I only want technologies to be that weight. But then of technologies, I only wanted Microsoft to be 15%. So it was really neat that I can actually structure that the way it is. So, and also real estate. You can see all of these are my REITs. I know I've talked a lot about REITs. As you can see, I'm real bullish on these. Um, REITs pay a good amount of dividends. Um, that's why I like these. So even though these companies pay dividends, growth is not something that they shy away from. So you can see Crown Castle, I'm up 64%. Um, you see Store Capital. Um, store Capital and well, all REITs took a big hit during, um, during the pandemic. But you can see the potential that they all had. And when I saw that, I threw a lot more money into my REITs. And I probably would have generally, but I saw it was a great opportunity to do so. So you can see um, some of these positions are small. I mean, this account is just still in its, its infancy. I want to see this account grow 10 times this, um, 20 times this, and hopefully more past that. But I started this account a little over a year ago, right before the pandemic. It seemed like it was a perfect time to start investing. It was right before the pandemic, but it didn't stop. Even when the pandemic hit, I continued to invest on a regular interval regardless of what the market did. And as you can see, my positions have increased since then. And then you can see, um, I'll let you kind of see all the different holdings that I have within these companies. So this is going to be my financials. This will be my consumer defense holdings. Um, love a lot of these companies. Dollar General, I feel like it's, it's a sleeping giant. Um, a lot of people never talk about Dollar General. They're popping up everywhere I turn around. Good or bad, economical times, Dollar General shines. Um, but you can see Costco, Target, Cisco, Walmart. But let's look over into industrials. So industrials, you can see that I have, you know, Boeing, um, Waste Management, Brinks, um, Caterpillar. I mean, these companies have been just shining through. It's just crazy to see that even small amounts can return big profits. So you do not have to have a lot of money into these companies to get invested. So a lot of people are like, well, I don't have... 15, 20, 30,000 to start investing. Well, you don't need it. Um, all you need is just a bank account a connection, flows of income coming into your bank account, and just putting portions aside for your retirement. And we got utilities. And you can see all my utility companies. Some have been doing good, and some I'm kind of um, waiting for an opportunity to. So, Enphase and Solar Edge are both. Um, are both solar companies. I figure with this administration, you're gonna start seeing less on the oil and gas, but more on renewable resources um, and also renewable sources of energy. It's lagging behind. See, not all investing is, is always in the green. Sometimes you're gonna have red times. I'm holding through these companies. I'm gonna be putting more into them as time goes by. Because I do believe, let's say for instance, in phase. As you look at the company over its five years, it is up 7,147%. So this is basically this recent downturn. Of course, I've picked the perfect time to invest in it, but that's what it's all about. It doesn't matter. I didn't care about the timing. I'm just continuously putting it to the company because over this recent turn, you can see that it's actually started coming back up. Um, the one month of in phase is up already 25%. Continuously investing in this company, and I will be able to see that hopefully pan out in the future. So we looked at utilities there. Let's look at my communication services. So um, American Tower, um, it is a REIT. Some of these could be labeled a little bit better, which is still me learning this platform and learning how to put them in there. Nonetheless, um, it's in the portfolio. I also have my consumer cyclical. So I do love these. I feel like these companies are just so, so great. Um, you're seeing them all over the place. Uh, at one point I was debating between Lowe's and Home Depot, so I just decided, shoot, just go ahead and put them both in there. Um, I have both of these holdings um, and McDonald's, Amazon, um, do not have Starbucks in my passive flow of income. Um, but I have all these companies also in my passive flow of income because they're strong growth, but they also pay dividends to their shareholders. So it's a win-win in my book. Basic materials, um, 
keep an eye on these companies. I love all three of these companies. Um, so WD-40. So WD-40, um, everybody's grandpa and everybody has either a can of WD-40 um, at their business, in their toolbox. Yeah, you'll probably find it in almost every, every household. But you also see Air Products and Chemicals and also Sherwin-Williams. And then my innovative. So this is a unique one. Um, this is something I'm, I'm kind of trying out. I have CRISPR Therapeutics, Twist Bioscience, and also Invite. These companies, um, Kathy Woods, if you're not familiar with Kathy Wood, Kathy Wood is the CEO and CIO of ARK Invest. If you have never heard of Kathy Woods or ARK Invest, highly recommend you follow her, um, follow her team. She's probably one of the most brilliant minds in the investment industry. I put her right up there with Warren Buffett's, they both have different type of philosophies when it comes to investing, but who says one is the best? Kathy is more bullish on you know growth and not where we are today, but where we will be in the future and what companies are disrupting the industry and creating more potential for the future than they are today. So um, didn't want to go over each individual company. We're going to start kind of doing more on the investment side. So, um, so stay tuned with that, but here's both of my portfolios. So between the two, you can actually hit on your transfers. I just reached $16,897.90. So this has taken a little over a year to do so. I would say closer to almost on the two year side. Um, I finished two big goals with, the, with um, our personal life and our personal family. So we built a home. So we've been in the home for a little over a year, so we have a new construction home. Um, so that was a doozy, so there's a lot of cash flow going into there, so I couldn't throw as much as I wanted to into the company. Um, but I also, um, we also bought, uh, bought some land last year. So we're coming up, this September will be a year that we own the land. So a lot of cash has flown into both, um, both our home and both the land that we purchased. But, um, now that I have both of those done, we're finishing paying down debt, but we're also throwing more money into our investment account. So I'm about to up this amount. So you can see that I, I put in $50 into both of these accounts, so Roth IRA and the passive income every week. Every week, without a doubt, I put money in there. So it's 400 a month total that I'm investing. And then whenever I hit certain goals within the account, I usually will put more money in there. So not a lot. So you can see $50 going into each portfolio. Uh, $50 going to each account, but every once in a while I'll make a special one and put in $150, or this one right here you saw $350. Um, you can see the list goes on and on, just continual. Every once in a while I'll put in extra, but it's just $50 investing on a regular interval, regardless of what the market's doing, allowed me to create a portfolio of $16,000 between both the accounts and i'm hoping to see these increase so here uh, in the near future i'm going to increase those amounts to 75 um, and then hopefully by the end of the year i'll be at a hundred dollars every week going into each account so the snowball will continue as i free up more cash by paying down debt instead of just spending the money and going to starbucks and buying more coffee i would rather throw that money into buying shares of starbucks or in by buying more shares of companies within my portfolio so stay tuned. Um, we're hoping to see this account grow over time and continue to see um, see my passive flow of income, create more and more income over time, and also my, my Roth IRA have more growth over time to see what we can do in creating more wealth and more income for my family. So hopefully you like this. If you did, please like, subscribe, um, follow along for more to come. Make sure you hit the bell and the notifications. You'll see whenever we pop out more of these. But um, in some of the next videos, we're going to start dissecting more companies, what I look for, um, and some things that, um, that are unique out in the market because everybody has a, their own way that they want to invest. So this is mine. So thanks for tuning in. Once again, this is Middle Class to Millionaire, and hopefully we'll be there in the future. Thank you.